Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. So recently I was going through some old photographs of mine and I came across this picture that I'd taken in Washington DC several years ago and this was of the Capitol building. So when I originally edited this, I edited it in Photoshop and while this is, I created a fairly stylized image with this, I actually think I overdid it. Um, well, I know I overdid it. So one of the things I wanted to do was kind of go back to the raw file and re-edit it. So just while browsing around, uh, I decided why not try and have a look and see what I can do by editing this in Luminar. So it's not a great image, uh, but it is something that I kind of have fond memories of because I enjoyed my trip to DC that time and this kind of reminds me of that. So I uh, just wanted to see what I could do by re-editing this file in Luminar. So this file was actually taken actually quite a few years ago now um, and it was originally shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. So I've opened it up in Luminar and so the first step is to do kind of the more technical edits and get that out of the way first. So what I mean by that is things like sharpening, lens corrections and so on. And then I'll move on to the second phase, which will be more creative editing. So to start with, the first thing I want to do is do the lens correction. Um, so if I move over to the raw develop panel and I click on lens. So what I want to do is to turn on all the options for lens corrections. So we have lens distortion, chromatic aberration, and defringe. Okay, so immediately you will see that that has straightened out the distortion in the lens. So when I shot this, it was shot with a 24 to 105 f4L. So this lens doesn't have a lot of distortion, but it does have a little bit. And by turning on the distortion correction, it will get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is tweak the sharpening and noise reduction. So. To do this, the best thing you should do is zoom in to one to one because otherwise it's not actually displaying properly. And if you don't do this, it's actually very easy to over sharpen and overcompensate. So just double clicking on the image will zoom into one to one. So the first thing you can do is um, turn up the sharpening. So I usually set it up to around say 30 and then drop down the radius just a little bit. So maybe 30 as well. And if you bring down the masking, um, it will actually sharpen more, but you will introduce a bit of noise. So to compensate for that, I'm just going to add a little bit of noise reduction here in the denoise panel. And I think that looks okay. You're not gonna be able to see this very clearly on a YouTube video, so uh, you'll just have to take my word for it, but that actually does look much better. Um, and I will turn, there's before and there's after. It's kind of hard to see from that. Um, I might give it a little bit more sharpening. Again, it's something that you would have to judge visually yourself and it will depend on an image by image basis. Um, but this to me looks okay. So, okay. So now that I have the sharpening and noise reduction done, um, that's pretty much it for the technical side of things. So I can move on now to the more creative side of editing. So in this case, the first thing I want to do is kind of tweak the exposure uh, a bit because as you can see, the sky is blown out and there's actually quite a moody sky here underneath all this. So if I bring the highlights, then you can see straight away, that's much better. And I can tweak the contrast a bit here as well. Okay, and what I want to do too is, I'm not overly happy with the white balance on this, but uh, rather than kind of play around with that, I'm going to apply a LUT because I have a nice LUT that I know will work quite well with this. So I'm going to scroll down to my LUT mapping, which is here somewhere. Uh, here we go. So just as a quick side point here, I have a workspace set up in Luminar that I'm using that I use for RAW. So I've added lots of stuff to it uh, already. Now, Luminar comes with a RAW workspace already. So mine is just kind of a customized version of that. So if you're not seeing the things that I have in it here, you, you can just add them and then save it as your own workspace. But anyway, that's beside the point. So let's just use the LUT that I want to use. And in this case, it's this one up here. I'm gonna click on this to apply it. Okay, and straight away that gives a nice look to the image. Um, it adds contrast, it corrects the color and everything's quite nice with it. So if you think this is too strong, you can actually turn this down a bit. But I quite like it, I think, where it is. Um, our sky is burning out again a bit, so, but we can fix that. And also, I need to bring the shadows up a little bit. Okay, that's not too bad.
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to darken the sky a bit. So we're gonna add a filter and we want, we want the gradient filter, if I can find it. So if you're ever having problems and you can't find a filter, just you can actually just search for it. So here we go, we want adjustable gradient. Okay, and again, for the top, we just want to bring the exposure down and maybe increase the contrast a bit. And we can move kind of the, the actual location of the gradient here as well. Okay. Okay, so in order to get even more kind of recovery and kind of bring out the dramatic sky a bit more, what we will do is add another layer. So I'm going over here to the top of the panel and I'll click on the create layer button. Add new adjustment layer. Okay, so this will create a new layer and we can add a gradient to this. So we want a gradient mask and draw out our gradient and we can go back and tweak this later if we need to. So. So what we want to do is, I'm going to start by doing, um, let's just try a basic tone edit. So we bring down the highlights, maybe the exposure a bit. Okay, and I can see now that my gradient is actually the wrong way around. So I'm going to do it again. Okay, so I fixed the gradient and by bringing up the shadows, uh, you will kind of compensate for that. Now you could, I could go in here and I can, if I switch this to erase, I can erase the dome. Um, but this gets very tricky fast. <laughs> so you have to be very careful with this. And I probably need to zoom in here to do this properly. But I will just very quickly kind of just show you what you c can do if you need to fix that. You can do it much more carefully than I am doing. Uh, I'm just doing this to show you how to do it. Okay, so that's that's actually much better. Um, okay, so we have darkened down the sky a bit. And we can try giving it a bit more by maybe adding a curves adjustment to it. Here's a curves adjustment. And again, we don't want to go too far because it's quite easy to overcompensate. So if I turn this layer off, you can see the effect we've had. Well, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I want to do now is I want to do some final overall adjustments to it. So I'm going to add another layer. And in this case, we're going to add a vignette. And again, if rather than trying to find everything, you can just do a quick search. So the purpose of the vignette is really just to kind of focus your attention in on the the building itself rather than focusing on the sky and the grass, uh, but still kind of drawing attention to the sky and the grass as well. So I know this isn't probably the best composition in the world. Um, and also to prefer it if all these people weren't here, I could try and clone them out, but it's, it's a bit more effort than it's worth. Again, this isn't really for anything. This is just for my own purposes. Um, but straight away, if I look, go back, you can see that's where we started and that's where we finished. So this is in editing entirely in uh, Luminar. We haven't actually done anything else. We're not taking it to Photoshop or anything. Uh, I don't think we need to, but I could if we wanted to. So that is pretty much it. That is editing it entirely in Luminar. So the final step now will be to just export this. There's one final thing I just want to point out as well is when you're looking at an image in Luminar, one of the things I've noticed is it doesn't display particularly brilliantly in that um, in order to speed up the software, it does alias the image a bit. And this is just a display. It's not actually um, how your image will render out. So if I export this, uh, it will actually look much better. And to just make sure that everything's OK, you can always zoom in. And once you zoom in, it will render the image properly. OK, so to export, does is we simply just go up and choose export. So what I will do here is I will export it as a JPEG and I'm not going to, I'm not going to resize it. Um, and I'll just for the moment, I'll just save it into my Dropbox folder and I will call it capital save. So it's important to remember too that once you export the image, you do need to save it as well if you want to save all your edits. So when you save it, uh, it uses Luminar's own format and that will save both the image file and all the edits non-destructively. So you can go back and change and tweak things if you need to. So to do that, just go save as. 
And the important thing here is go save original resources. That will make sure that includes the original image data. If you don't save this, it will actually just save the metadata of the, all your edits. Um, you can leave history on or off as well. And Windows compatible will make sure it's compatible with Windows if you're using this on a Mac. Um, there are some compatibility issues still with Windows and Luminar, so doing this will make sure it's compatible with Windows, but you may lose some edits. So if you are on a Mac and you don't need to send it to a Windows computer, I suggest leaving this off. And again, just call it whatever you need to call it. So after I had finished and saved the image and then I opened up the exported version, I realized that I didn't actually like the white balance on it, that it was still a bit too warm. So what I wanted to do was go back in and re-edit the file. So I thought this would give me just another example too, just to show you how easy it is to just re-edit files as well. Um, I mean, again, this is kind of fairly obvious stuff, but I'm going to show you anyway. Okay, so what I want to do is go back down to the base layer and I'm just going to lower the white balance ever so slightly just to make it a bit cooler. I don't want to go too cool, but in, for my taste, it's a bit too warm. And I think straight away that's much better. Okay, and then I'll just go slick to my top layer again. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to turn on this curves layer um, just to give it a bit more contrast. That's better now, so I'm, I'm much more happier with that. So I can just uh, export this again and save it again, and uh, we're ready to go. And so here is the finished edited version. So as you can see, it's actually not that difficult to edit raw files in Luminar. If, is it any better than working with, say, Lightroom or Photoshop or some other software? It's not really better per se, it's just different. And I find it's an interesting way to work, and I enjoy working with it sometimes. I find it can be quite a creative experience because there's quite a lot of options and you can stack lots of edits and you can do lots of things. Um, as always, the thing to remember when editing is to be careful not to over edit. I find that over editing is something that's actually quite easy to do and I do do it myself quite a lot. So I always try to rein myself back in, um, but I'm ha quite happy with this. I think this looks quite well compared to how we started. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, click that little bell button just so you get notified when we post new updates. And uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.